My ex-wife recently passed away in an accident. I've been considering taking in our twin daughters, but I didn't think you would agree, so I apologize for bringing it up. When I mentioned it, I thought I misheard my wife's cheerful response, thinking she agreed to taking in two more kids. To my surprise, she said it was okay and that we should bring them home. I wondered why she agreed to such a sudden request. Later, she explained her reason. My name is Hayden, and I've been married to Leela for two years. I am divorced, and Leela is my second wife. The reason for my divorce was because my ex-wife, Amy, had an affair. Amy loved flashy things, which were the complete opposite of me. Her extroverted and friendly personality attracted many friends, unlike my introverted nature. She seemed to like that I had a good career at a well-known company and married me for it. Amy kept trying to get my attention, and I eventually married her. Life with lively Amy was enjoyable in its own way, and I'm grateful that she gave birth to our twin daughters, Moira and Clara, who are my treasures. When Moira and Clara turned two, Amy suddenly told me she wanted a divorce because she was pregnant with someone else's child. I was shocked by how casually she said it and didn't understand at first. I was furious and demanded to know who the other man was. It turned out to be a foolish man she often met, one of her many friends who even attended our wedding. He betrayed me and stole my wife. Disgusted by the situation, I took Moira and Clara and stayed at my parents' house. We ended up divorcing, and both Amy and I had to pay alimony, but I couldn't win custody of the girls. I knew it was difficult for a father to win custody, but since my wife was the one who broke our marriage, it was especially hard to accept. I couldn't change the decision and was only allowed to see Moira and Clara regularly in exchange for child support payments. I looked forward to the days I could see them and made sure our time together was filled with fun memories like going to theme parks and zoos. However, living together was no longer an option and after returning the girls to Amy, I found myself crying alone on the bus ride home, realizing my heart was empty after losing my wife and daughters. I was feeling so mentally drained that I couldn't see a reason to keep going. A grown man crying on a bus must have been a strange sight as the other passengers started to move away. Then, a woman named Leela approached me out of concern. She asked if I was okay and suggested we get off at the next stop together. Leela wasn't just being curious or showing pity. She genuinely cared. It struck me as unusual and made me wonder why she would be kind to someone like me. When I told her I was fine, she insisted that people who are fine don't cry and handed me a handkerchief. She insisted on getting off with me at the next stop. I tried to deflect her kindness, but she found a bench at the bus stop where I ended up sharing my sad story. Layla listened intently, nodding along, which made me feel like she truly cared. Lila's words gave me hope. She assured me that while I might be going through a dark period, brighter days would come. Her kindness truly saved me. Using the excuse of returning her handkerchief after washing it, I got her contact information and started meeting her often. As I got to know Lila more, I realized she was different. She cared for everyone and was kind to all. Despite her occasional clumsy mistakes, she was genuine. Eventually, I suspected there might be something more to her kindness, but she wasn't the type to have hidden motives. Her sincerity and occasional blunders, followed by asking me for advice, made me fall in love with her. I took the first step and proposed to Leela. Leela, you've brightened up my life. Will you marry me? I'll never forget the moment she smiled happily at my awkward proposal. Even after Leela and I had a son named Tom, I continued to visit Moira and Clara regularly. Leela knew about the child support payments and that I had twin daughters. I was afraid she might feel uncomfortable, so I never mentioned it. Feeling guilty, I lied and said I was going out with friends instead of telling her the truth. Despite this, Leela would always send me off with a smile, saying, Take care. One day, I received a sudden call informing me that my ex-wife, Amy, had passed away in a car accident along with her current husband and their child. It was Amy's mother who called, sounding depressed. She explained that she couldn't take care of Moira and Clara, my twin daughters, 
and mentioned they might need to be placed in a facility if no one could care for them. Without hesitation, I told her I would take them in. However, after impulsively agreeing, I felt overwhelmed with guilt. I was now building a new family with Leela and our son Tom, and knew it might be impossible to manage everything. So, I decided to talk to Leela about it. I approached Leela and explained the situation. Actually, my ex-wife passed away in an accident. I've been thinking about taking in our twin daughters, but I assume you wouldn't agree. Sorry for bringing this up. To my surprise, Leela responded compassionately, Oh, that's terrible. It's okay. I was prepared for her to suggest divorce or be upset, so I thought I misheard her. She continued, It means we'll have two more kids. It's okay, bring them home. They must be feeling lost without their mom suddenly gone. Puzzled by her acceptance, I asked why she was okay with this. She rolled her eyes and laughed, saying, Silly, you've always cared for the twins, haven't you? I knew you were meeting them regularly. I noticed how you always sneak out and come back in a good mood. I knew you wouldn't cheat on me, so it couldn't be an affair. See, I'm such a good detective, right? In that moment, I realized just how generous and understanding Leela was. Thank you, I said, grateful for her support and kindness. After thanking Leela, I drove to my former in-law's house to pick up Moira and Clara. When I found them, the five-year-old twins were sleeping cuddled together, their cheeks marked with traces of tears. My heart ached seeing them like that. I expressed my gratitude to my former mother-in-law and gently woke Moira and Clara, explaining the situation as simply as possible for children. Both of them cried upon hearing the news that they wouldn't see their mother again, but they bravely said, We want to be with you, Daddy, accepting to live with me. As we drove back home, I told them about Leela and Tom, explaining that Leela was a kind and wonderful woman and Tom was a cute little baby. Moira and Clara seemed anxious, but they nodded quietly. When we arrived home, Leela had prepared a feast with dishes that children love. She introduced herself to Moira and Clara with a warm smile, saying, Welcome, I'm Leela. I'll be living with you guys from now on, so let's get along. I know you two must be very sad right now, but it's okay. You have your dad, and of course, I'm here too. Lila spoke to them gently, encouraging them to eat. Moira and Clara hesitated at first, but soon began eating heartily, which relieved me. After bathing them and putting them to bed, I discovered that Lila had already bought children's bedding. She had carried it home herself since I had taken the car. Lila laughed it off, but I was truly grateful. Moira and Clara initially refused to sleep with Leela, so I ended up sleeping between them. When I apologized for their behavior, Leela reassured me, saying, It's too sudden for them. For a while, you'll be their main support. Don't worry about me, just do your best. During the night, Moira and Clara cried in their sleep, making it a heart-wrenching night. However, living together went smoother than I had expected. Leela didn't mind when the twins looked at her suspiciously. She scolded them like a real mother when they misbehaved and comforted them gently when they cried. As we settled into our new life together, it became clear that Amy hadn't been very affectionate towards the twins. Moira and Clara tried to do everything by themselves, from getting snacks out of the fridge to putting away their clothes. Initially, I thought they were quite independent, but their behavior seemed unusual. As Leela and I discussed Amy's neglect of Moira and Clara, we realized just how little care Amy had taken of them. The clothes sent for Moira and Clara were extremely limited, and when Leela cooked for them, they asked hesitantly if Leela would give them food too. They were puzzled by simple routines like taking a daily shower. Having been used to bathing only once every two days, it was also odd that Amy went on trips with her new family leaving Moira and Clara behind. It became clear that the girls had been treated poorly, and I couldn't contain my anger. I can't forgive Amy or her husband. They had a duty to make Moira and Clara happy after gaining custody, yet why didn't they take care of them properly? I trembled with rage, but Amy and her husband were no longer alive for me to confront. I felt powerless, clenching my fists in frustration. Lila comforted me, saying, Hayden, I understand your anger. 
Not properly caring for adorable kids like Moira and Clara is infuriating. But there's no use holding onto anger towards people who are no longer here. The best revenge on Amy and her husband is making Moira and Clara happy with us. Let's pour all our love into them and Tom, not getting caught up in anger or hatred towards those who've passed. Her calm and compassionate words moved me deeply. I blamed myself for not realizing how Moira and Clara were being treated despite meeting them regularly. Lilla comforted me, saying, It's okay, Hayden. You're doing everything you can. I dedicated myself to being a good father for Moira and Clara, and, of course, for Tom, fulfilling my responsibility as a parent. Over time, Moira and Clara gradually warmed up to Leela's bright and friendly demeanor. Initially wary of her, they eventually wanted to sleep next to Leela. When they argued over who got to be closer to Leela, she hugged them both and said with a smile, No need to fight over me. I love you both, so it's okay. Leela's positive and reassuring presence was like magic. Her constant assurance was a salvation for Moira, Clara, and me. As time passed, Moira and Clara grew up and became fifth graders. On the open school day, Leela and I shared a nostalgic moment, reminiscing about our youth and sharing stories from when we were their age. I remember attending Moira and Clara's school to make a presentation about feelings towards parents and personal treasures. The students were tasked with writing essays on the theme of family, and I was a bit worried about how Leela might feel if Moira and Clara wrote only about Amy and her husband. It could potentially hurt Leela's feelings. When I expressed my concerns to Leela, she laughed them off. Even if their essays are all about Amy and her husband, it doesn't bother me at all. If that means they were happy with those two, isn't that a good thing? The challenge of having twins was deciding who would attend which class on open school day. Despite feeling a bit saddened, both Moira and Clara insisted they wanted Leela to come. To be fair, we had them play a coin toss to decide. Moira won, which left Clara feeling downcast. I reassured Clara, don't you like being with daddy? I love you very much. Clara responded, it's not that I don't like being with you, daddy. I love you too but I wanted Leela to hear. I worried if Clara was starting to rebel, but her true feelings became clear after she read her essay on open school day. In her essay, Clara wrote about Leela, mentioning her life with Amy and her husband, which wasn't very happy. She shared feeling incredibly anxious when her mother died, but also expressed being happy to live with me and scared of living with Leela, whom she didn't know. Clara then spoke about the things Leela did for her, like taking baths together and playing with bubbles for the first time. Leela would soothe her when she cried at night until she fell asleep. The way Clara described Leela in her essay painted a picture of a loving mother figure. Clara concluded her essay by saying, I want to call Leela mom, but I've been too shy to say it, so I decided to call her mom when I get home today. As Clara finished reading, I couldn't help but cry uncontrollably. Other parents were tearing up, and even the teacher was wiping away tears. After the open school day, Leela, who was with Moira, had red eyes and a runny nose just like me. When I asked what happened, Leela shared that Moira had read a similar essay. It seemed they had planned it. After nodding to each other, Moira and Clara turned to Leela and said in unison, Mom, we love you. Leela broke down in tears, hugging them tightly and trembling as she said, Mom loves you both so much too. Naturally, I burst into tears again. Our family was living happily, and any thoughts of revenge against Amy and her husband had vanished without notice. All I wished for was to protect this beloved family. Being able to live such a happy life was all thanks to Leela. When I expressed my gratitude to her, she simply smiled and said, Thanks to you too. I could never thank her enough.